You are Locked On Lakers. Your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Lakers for Friday. The Lakers, Andy, win in Game 3, 109-95. The final score in what was for really about... 87% 87% of the game, 88% of the game, a truly dominant defensive performance by the Lakers. Phoenix, for the 18 minutes after the first quarter, uh, Andy, uh, for the next 18 minutes, had 18 points. Uh, yeah. That is not going to get it done in the NBA. It, it, it was just the, the defense the Lakers were playing at times in this game. Like It's funny. You hear about teams that can score in waves. Mm-hmm. The Lakers are the rare team that can defend in waves. And when when they start defending at the top of their game, like it feels to me really similar to when the Splash Brothers start just raining down these impossible threes over and over, mm-hmm. and everything feels like a backbreaker. The Lakers put out backbreaking defensive stands, and they will do them, you know, over multiple possessions in ways that you don't see from a lot of teams, even really good defensive teams. Yeah, and so that's something we'll get into. LeBron James um, was not the statistical leader uh, for the Lakers tonight, but definitely looked a little better, spent more time at the rim, uh, at the very least, Andy, than he has uh, in the other games in this series. Uh, Good nights from the supporting cast as well. And uh, we'll finish things up looking at the outside shooting, which is still, Andy... Not good. This was the first playoff game that this group has won shooting under 30%. That was the magical threshold. The Lakers showed that they don't even need that anymore. Um, so uh, good stuff there from the Lakers. Do want to let you well, know. They're defending champs for a reason, Brian. That's right. They can shoot 25% from three-point range and still win. Uh, I want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by Locker Room. Download the app and join us every Friday at 12 Pacific, 12 noon, high noon. Uh, to get in on the action locker room, changing the way that we talk sports. Um, before we get to LeBron specifically, though, Andy, let's let, let, the reaction to this one, like I, at the risk of being too much like guy who's prisoner of the moment, you saw a second great game from AD. And I thought actually uh, in game three, he was better than in game two. It was, it was, a, it was a game where he's in a bit of a, more of a flow. Um, He was able to score without having to get hacked every single time. Um, Another good game from Drummond. Another good game from Schroeder. It felt to me, at least, like they kind of took control of this series tonight, um, especially with CP functionally unable to do anything for, for Phoenix. Yeah, I mean, like you really get an idea of just how much control they had over the game because the moments where... Either it was tight or, you know, towards the end, Phoenix started making more of a game of it before the Lakers broke it open again. That was largely due to their own carelessness and their own turnovers or, you know, down the stretch, I think it's fair to say, a bit of showboating going on, uh, a, oh, bit yeah. of in-ga- a bit of in-game celebrating. Which- there, was some, there was some jazz hands. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, it, to be clear, neither one of us is chastising the team for doing this. It was totally entertaining, but... The Suns the were not a- like if you want to do basketball where like every play is essentially a bat flip. I am here for it. Right. Like, but but a the Suns were not amused by it, and we're going to get into that. But no, also they were not. too, that it did lead to some sloppiness. And early early in the game, particularly the the first quarter where the Lakers finished down one and Phoenix put up twenty eight, the Lakers turned the ball over a lot, mm-hmm. and and that is in a lot of ways indicative of their control or lack thereof, but e- either way, how they often control their own fate in yes. games. And, and and because they are so talented, and in this series, they are emerging the better team, you see the way they can control the game in either direction. This is the first time, and you're right, I mean, the, the first quarter turnovers were them doing kind of what they do, which is turn the ball over a lot. The fourth quarter, letting Phoenix back in the sloppiness there is really just from taking their foot off the gas and... um <laughs> using essentially the dance. Be, be, <laughs> that's what they were using their feet for <laughs> <laughs> dancing around i mean li- literally andre drummond was on the sidelines imitating moves that lebron was doing to just turn the game into 
essentially a snuff film against Jay Crowder. He was, he was beclowning Jay Crowder. There <laughs> yes. was no question about it. Yeah, the, the two of them have history and don't like each other. And I, I, it felt like LeBron was using a large lead to basically rub that bleep in. Yeah, I mean, as, as I tweeted out during the game at Cam Brothers, like this was the best treatment the Lakers have come up with for LeBron's <laughs> ankle was just – Jay Crowder, like the opportunity to make Jay Crowder look stupid, seemed to heal LeBron in a big way. Um, but let, so we're, we're going to get those again. Get to LeBron. I AD AD was awesome uh, in, in Game Three. Thirty four points, uh, eleven rebounds, a block, a steal, eleven of twenty two from the uh, from the field, twelve of fourteen from the from the free throw line. It was everything that, that the Lakers need out of him. And I, I thought you could tell something good was going to happen. Uh, he he hit that first mid-range jump shot and then also in the first quarter early was able to get into the center of Phoenix's defense and finish with a couple very aggressive slams. I mean, you got a little bit of both, and I was like, this is going well early. Well, he was doing something, too, that we had talked about after, after the Game 2 win, but also... A lot leading up to this point where, you know, there's been all this talk about, you know, the best floor combinations for him and whether he works with Andre Drummond, you know, whether he should be at the five, et cetera. Sometimes it's just up to him to attack whoever's in front of him, no matter mm -hmm. which teammates are on the floor with him. The last couple games, he's basically just been going and going quickly and aggressively and decisively. And when he does that, he's too good. He's just too good. Yeah, for absolutely, to and, and this this gets to the topic that we were talking about yesterday in terms of the the faith. What level of faith do Lakers fans have? What Lake? What level of faith does sort of the NBA universe have in the the daily showing upness of of AD? And I think it's some of it has to do with just that aggressive. So you put it really well with that. Uh, that sort of pow kind of mentality that he sometimes has where he slips back into something where he's either too deliberate or too deferential, whatever it might be. He was not that. It was really funny. Like the Lakers offense, which didn't produce a whole lot of points in the first half. I mean, the Lakers finished the first half with um, 42 points. That's not good. <laughs> it's not a lot of points. 43. I'm sorry. Uh, right. Well, that's, sure that's that correct. One better, but but still not no, I good. Just, just for accuracy. So right. it, is, it is not good either way. But I, I mean, it was Phoenix sure. is worse. Yeah. Uh, Phoenix, Phoenix had, 40. I believe, 40. Yep. Yeah. That's not good. Um, but the Lakers were, were actually functioning, I thought, better early in game three than they had throughout the series. They were moving. They were. Every time they managed to score, it seemed like it was off of a cut. It was off of a good pass, pushing the ball, moving quickly. On the, they just they got a ton of open three pointers and open jump shots. They just missed all of them. This is something Frank Vogel said the last couple of games. He's like, "Look, I, I'm concerned with the way we're executing and giving us, and I want to make sure we're giving ourselves good looks." They're eventually going to start going down, and for the time being, we're just going to have to take Vogel's word for it's it. It's a good sign, but they, they haven't needed it yet. Right, but – and, and you know, Mark Gasol, and this is something we're going to talk about later on in the show when it comes to uh, outside shooting. He's pointed out that at times uh, there are some players who are being hesitant with good looks, mm -hmm. but the idea that they can't run an offense right now to generate – because that's been an issue for the Lakers before where just their offense turns into just mud – that hasn't actually been the case it, the it, last few games. No, they've gotten they've gotten the looks of them. They just cannot hit a, a shot, which right. is obviously, you know, there's going to be a game probably at some point in this series. They have a game where they shoot fifty three percent from three and they win by thirty over how many um, games. But you know, that's the, the what the day to day. Like this is this is clearly part of the complexion of the team and a major weakness um, of them. But before we break, let's. The, the fact, you know, we mentioned uh, another great game from AD. Second consecutive, really strong games, both from Schroeder, who was 20, uh, 20 points, got the line eight times, made seven of them. Again, finishing a lot at the rim, providing some of that, uh, that attacking uh, ability. And Drummond, 11 rebounds, six points plus 12 in 20 minutes. Uh, you know, two, you know, a block shot. He was really good, really active. Um, and like, it's, it, it's starting to come together. It seems like, 
Yeah, I mean, there, there had been a lot of confidence expressed by Anthony Davis, by Frank Vogel, by LeBron, and by Andre Drummond himself. They're like, look, we are figuring this thing out in real time on the fly in each of these games, which is not ideal, but there's a reason that we all feel like if it works, it's going to be really effective. I think Drummond is starting to look more comfortable right now, and he's definitely got more room to operate with LeBron and AD out there and all the attention sure. they get. But also, too, I mean, just – the amount of pounding and dirty work and physicality that he absorbs that allows Anthony Davis to stay fresh over an entire game, like this is part of the reason why AD doesn't want to play center for an entire game, but also too, the Lakers don't want him to play yes. center for an entire game because the net effect, if everything else is working, allows Anthony Davis to be more dominant, uh, more dominant over the course of an entire game, and it seems like the, over the last couple of games, the Lakers have started to get into it. I think some of it, and this relates to LeBron, which we'll get to in a second, operating quicker. Uh, not yeah. necessarily. I don't mean fast break quicker. I mean getting into your offense quicker, getting up the floor quicker, and not allowing Phoenix to just get set and really dig in in a half court offense. They're getting better at allowing Drummond to do the things that he's really good at because. He's got major shortcomings that we all know about, but the things he's good at, he's very good at. So can you maximize those things and get him out of the way for the other stuff? And over the last couple games, the Lakers have done a better job at that. Andy, speaking of better jobs, LeBron James did a better job of getting to the rim, which I'm sure he'll be happy to hear me complimenting him that way because he deeply cares. Um, but he did look better in game three, a lot more spry, and we'll talk about that next. Locked on Lakers brought to you by Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar ever. These bars are covered in 100% chocolate, soft, easy to chew, unlike the other ones, which you know, I'm not going to say which they are, but you know who they are and they taste awful. Built Bars, though, taste awesome. They are healthy, great for health conscious people trying to either lose or maintain weight, but still want to indulge in something that really tastes awesome, low calorie, low sugar, high protein, high fiber. They are great for keto diets. They taste even deliciouser which is a word, according to those writing the script. Then before, you got 12 original flavors like raspberry, coconut almond, salted caramel, banana bread, six new flavors like cherry barcia. That's the one for you deadheads out there. Lemon, almond, cheesecake, cookies, and cream. It's perfect for someone like me who loves to come up with different taste combinations. You never get bored eating the same thing over and over with Built Bars. Go to BuiltBar.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15. Get 15% off your first order. Promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. So uh, Jim Jackson, who does um, analyst work for TNT. Former Laker. Former Jim Laker. Jackson. That you, I think we mentioned this on a podcast. Like that seemed that turned out to be the biggest nothing burger of a of an acquisition that at the time seemed like a really big deal. They brought him in just to try to spell Kobe some minutes during the playoffs. Jim Jackson was a veteran at Kobe's position who actually had played in the triangle before in Dallas, and for reasons neither one of us understood, he could not get on the court. Mm -hmm. Didn't, they didn't play. Um, but anyway, he he made the point that, um, you know, LeBron, particularly as he's getting healthier doing the on the broadcast for TNT, he he Anthony Davis needs to be their best player. And I think he has been over the last couple of games. LeBron is still their most important player. He makes the thing operate. He makes it move. And the line on uh, on Thursday wasn't perfect. It was, you know, 21 points, nine of 19 from four. He had seven turnovers. Um, that number is obviously too high. He did have nine assists, but he was able to get to the rim. He took five three pointers, made his first one, missed his next four, and the other fourteen shots. A lot of um, much more at the rim, off the pick and roll, uh, putting the ball on the floor across from Jay Crowder, all that stuff. He looked better on Thursday physically than he has since any game since Indiana when he re-injured it. And again, I don't know if that was all the Jay Crowder factor, but I do think he talked about it in, in, in his post game. They He made some adjustments in the second half. I think the biggest one is go faster. Just g get the ball, go. Get the pick and roll. If nobody's in front of you, go. Um, and I, I think that really helped. Yeah, I mean, it was interesting, too. He He's often seemed to not be operating using a screen, and I don't know if maybe just 
one less thing to get around, you know, like you doesn't bring another defender. Right. Exactly. But also just less hesitation, less and just going straight, like you said, without anything that you have to deal with at all. I mean, maybe something like that was helping. I, I think maybe sort of pacing himself a little bit in terms of how often he was driving. He was driving some in the first half, but he really started turning it on in that second half. And maybe that's part of the formula. Who knows? I mean, maybe it's just, maybe he is now just starting to really realize how to play more with it. It's been uh, difficult at times to sort of just gauge a lot of this other than just during a game and, you know, trying to observe from your TV how he's looking. But this was something that I think would be really reassuring for fans. Like mm-hmm. if, if you're trying to gauge how LeBron is going to hold up, you know, over the course of what you hope is going to be a very long playoff run, you know, he's got an extra day off before Sunday. And obviously one game does not make the entire postseason. But this looked potentially promising. It looked, it looked, and here's the thing too. I think this is why all those performances we talked about in the last segment are so important because LeBron really can, he's so good that he can control the games and he can put an imprint on games without necessarily going off, without being, you know, like the the Suns right now aren't going to win if CP isn't healthy, if Devin Booker doesn't put up 45. Like it's just, it, they need that. The Lakers have enough stuff right now where they – they don't need LeBron to be awesome, and that if the other guys are good, if AD is good, if Schroeder gives them twenty and all that stuff. So I, I feel like if you're looking for the formula, the Lakers get ahead in the series. LeBron hasn't do, had to do a whole lot of heavy lifting. They now go into the only game in this series where you get the extra day off. Maybe you can get out of this series in five or six. You know, um, not to not to get too far ahead and rest a little bit before the second round, or whatever it might be, it is at least, the Lakers aren't making it harder for themselves to get LeBron back into a good place. I think the other thing we're starting to see too over the last couple games, and maybe this is something that consciously he's thinking about, if they can be ahead at the half, you know, whether by a big margin or, you know, I believe in this game they were up three at the half, you can start using LeBron as the guy that knocks out the team. Like, you know, he keeps everything going, keeps everything going during the first half. And then in the second, he really starts. You pick your spots. And he was a big, he and AD, I think, scored. They scored 33 points, the Lakers did, in that in that third quarter. And I am I forget the exact number, but it was, it was driven 18, 20 points, whatever that was, by LeBron and AD. Yeah. I mean, they, they were part of just, the Lakers were having a field day in the paint. They had 58 points in the paint. And honestly, it felt like way more. Like I, I was actually kind of surprised it was that low just mm-hmm. because it seemed like they were living in there. They were destroying Phoenix on the glass. And also, too, I mean, this was something that was, I think, really like really marked difference over the last uh, you know, last two games and really the last few weeks, maybe even months for the Lakers. They were having so much fun. And LeBron oh. was LeBron was like the ringmaster of this particular circus. I mean, on the floor, and look, I, the, some people might like it, some people might not. I don't particularly care. I found it really entertaining. And like a lot of things, if you don't want, you know, you don't want to be, uh, have the other team clowning you and all that, try not to be stuck on, you know, 62 points and down by 15 points. And, you know, like that, that stuff matters lebron and i'm sorry it was 28 points of the 33 it was 20 uh lebron and ad had 28 of the 33 that um that the lakers scored in the third and you know i i do think some of that little extra boost came from that interaction with crowder absolutely you know and and just the opportunity to to kind of make him look bad and you know i guess to his credit crowder didn't back off of it he was draped all over look, LeBron. Jay, Jay, look, Jay Crowder loves this stuff. I, I mean, if, mm-hmm. if he had the opportunity to replace the number on his jersey with just a middle finger, he'd, he'd do it in a heartbeat. I yeah. mean, he, he loves being the heel. Like, he really leans into this. He is a talkier bleep kind of player. And, you know, he is, he is completely unafraid. And I, th- and I think he's reached a status as a player 
where he can get away with it. I mean, he's obviously not a star and he's never going no, to be. No, but I think but he's I not think, a I, think I don't know what people think of him, like the person. I have no idea, but like they hate people, him on the court. He ain't well, they do, but I also, but I think there's a level of respect for the amount of work that it took for Crowder to get to this place in his career, like to carve out, like, you know, he wasn't, you know, the third pick in the draft. Like right. this was, you know, this was a guy who worked his way into a really important role on some good teams. And so I, I think he has that respect, but no, there's know, a reason that there's a reason playoff teams keep bringing him in. I mean, he, he's yes, a really absolutely. useful guy to have out there. That said, like, you know how you'll always hear players talk about how, you know, they like certain guys, you know, away from the game or whatever. But, you know, when you step in between the lines, they're not there to make friends. Jay Crowder seems like he is specifically there to make enemies. Like that's actually <laughs> right. his goal. He's out He's out there to make sure that he like retires with no friends. A great example. You know, I, LeBron and, and CP are, are really, really tight. I'm sure like everyone else in the league, LeBron mostly wants to flick CP in the ear every time he sees him um, because he really is annoying. And he was annoying um, in game three. Even when he couldn't play, he was annoying, and so um, I it, it's it, that that's part of it. I the, the chippiness of the series is something that that well, we'll do that now. Let's do that next before we get into the shooting, because the Lakers' outside shooting, even up to one in the series, I think is a little distressing. Uh, it needs to get a little better, um, but we'll do that. We'll talk about the uh, the the chippiness of the series. Devin Booker and Crowder both being thrown out of the game uh, near the end of Game Three. We'll do that next. Locked on Lakers brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online, the fastest, easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Baseball season's in full swing. You can track all the action at Bet Online. Always a ton of sports action on the go. Feels, Brian, like a very good time to place a bet on the Lakers to cover. Not an official mm -hmm. recommendation. I'm just telling you the vibe that I'm getting at the moment. Uh, you can always get all the latest news, odds, info for your sporting needs, including MLB, NBA, NHL, UFC, MMA. At Bet Online before the next pitch, head over to Bet Online on your laptop, mobile device. Check out all the great sporting news, sign up bonuses, contest information. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore. This is your chance to get into the game as all these teams are neck deep in the playoffs. Head to the website, use your mobile device, sign up today, receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit using the promo code LOCKED ON. Bet Online, your online sportsbook experts. Uh, Locked on Lakers podcast also brought to you by Rock Auto. You know, I'm not a car guy per se, Andy. You know that about me. But yeah. over time, there are a few things that I've learned I can safely kind of handle and do on my own thanks to a combination of the internet and watching people do stuff to my car that actually did look kind of easy. But I'm still not super confident. And so like when I walk into a store, it's easy to shake that confidence. Is this the right part? Do I need a different part? Is this the best brand? And so I don't want a bunch of often pointless but still intimidating questions. Uh, and I won't have to wait while the counter guy orders the parts on his computer, choosing the brand that his warehouse carries and saying, oh, it's fine. You don't need this other one. Um, and you don't need that either, Andy. Um, no. you, have a <laughs> you have a computer with access to rockauto.com. I have that. You have one at home. You carry them in your pocket like I do in the form of a phone. Chain stores have different prices. I carry pricing. mine in my pocket in the form of a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> I have big pockets. Yeah. <laughs> we have actually, we need what we really need is a pants sponsor. I wear like hammer pants. Uh, <laughs> chain stores have different price tiers for professional mechanics and do-it-yourselfers. Rockauto's prices, rockauto.com's prices are the same for everybody and a reliably low 20, 30, even 50% lower than chain stores or new car dealership. And they have everything that you need, all the parts, the, the, the brand that you want, the make that you want, the model you want. You get that. You go to rockauto.com right now and you check out all the parts available for your car or truck like right locked locked on in there. How did you hear about us box? So they know that we sent you, we and Andy's giant pocketed pants sent you rockauto.com. These teams, I don't know if it's quite, you know, uh, Clippers versus, I guess, sort of everyone. What teams... <laughs> don't hate the Clippers. Like everyone hates the Clippers. I was going to say the Clippers, but the way it seems like they've been fighting lately, I'm not even sure that answer is correct. But, you know, like who was it last year where the, the, it got everything kept getting chippy. Like the last couple seasons, everything just keeps getting chippy with the Clippers. Well, the answer is nobody likes them. Right. I they they are, a, they really are an unlikable. This is not like Lakers hating on the Clippers. Like 
I, I, I have, I like, I know people in the Clippers organization. I like them. I, I yeah. want, they're well run. I want them to do well. It's fun for basketball and they are not a likable bunch. Not this group. No, they really aren't. Um, this series is getting a little chippy. Um, there's a lot of chirping going on, a lot of trash talking. Um, at least for the time being, it does seem like Phoenix is coming out of the wrong side of it. And, and at the end of the game, at least on Thursday, there was some sense of Phoenix coming a little bit unglued. That that foul from Booker on Schroeder, for example, the two-handed shove uh, while Schroeder was in the air, deserved a absolutely deserved an ejection. Yeah, I, there's no question. I mean, the the when asked about this, and obviously the Lakers are going to be partisan on this, but it, I every single person that I heard comment about it all said the exact same thing was not a basketball play. And mm -hmm. that was the exact same thing that the commentators were saying during this. I mean, like this, this was crossing over from competitiveness to physical competitiveness to the Suns getting really pissed off and taking it out in this particular case on Dennis Schroeder. Right. So Booker got ejected and, and, you know, Jay Crowder had been chirping. It felt like at that point, the refs were like, look, we can see where this is going. We're just going to cut to the chase. You're out too. Right. And, I, look, and I, again, I get it. No, I'm not the saying Lakers, you're wrong. The Lakers were rubbing it in their faces. Like they absolutely 100. Like, and, if, and you look over and it's not, again, it's not just LeBron laughing at Crowder on the floor and all that. It is, you know, Andre Drummond doing the shadow, you know, dribbling on the sidelines and the bench and all that. I get it. It's part of the game. I get it. You get frustrated. Phoenix has had a great season. They've worked really hard to get here. And, you know, we're struggling in a big way in that game. And the Lakers, you know, may have made a little bit of, of a mistake in they kind of woke up Phoenix near the end of that game. Yeah, I mean, they they started getting <laughs> a little too into the celebrations, a little too into the mono -e mono between uh, LeBron and Jay Crowder, and they took themselves out of it. Yeah. Campaign, like when Alex Caruso dropped down to do the worm, I thought that was too much. <laughs> and then, you know, campaign went on a, a, a one-man run. Like, I don't know his free agency status, but if he has the ability to opt out or go into free agency, he may have made himself some money. He has been terrific during this series. Campaign is, you know, keep talking. I'm going to look that up. It's a good question. And and I will say this, as much as the Lakers were definitely, you know, feeling themselves in a way that could feel like rubbing it in, I do think there was a little part of them that was celebrating because they really needed to be enjoying themselves. I think from like a psychological standpoint of everything they've gone through the last few months, like I think it's actually oh, very I important for them to be oh, experiencing 100 percent. i don't think it was directed at the phoenix suns necessarily but it was i don't think if you're the suns you don't either. care you don't make that <laughs> yeah. distinction if you're the suns yeah oh if i'm phoenix i'm not enjoying this at who cares all. it's like oh, you know, they're they're happy they've, they've had a frustrating last few weeks that doesn't we're the ones being humiliated on tv uh yes. campaign is a an unrestricted free agent Good. Timing. We're about to enter a summer, Andy, where Campaign and Kelly Olynyk are the best free agents on the market. There you go. <laughs> there <laughs> Let's you are. Do this. You know, timing is everything. But yeah, it, it's it's going to be interesting to see what, if any, carryovers uh, come from this. You know, I mean, I'm sure the league is going to review the the thing between Booker and Schroeder just because there was an ejection of flagrant two. I would be shocked if he's suspended. Frankly, I don't think he should. I hope or, he's not. And I don't I mean, want I really to be suspended. Hope he's not. I don't. I mean, want look, if if this if this game were if this happened in November, they might give him a game. Probably, right. I still think probably not. Um, it wasn't hyper violent. No, it was, I think it was, he's going to get fined, and that's going to be the end of it. And, and that's, I think that's and I think if you I think yeah. if you ask the Lakers, they're like he doesn't don't we'll go play him. He doesn't need to be suspended. Like I don't I don't think that's what they're looking for. Um, but it it does. There are moments throughout a series, I think, where you wonder where some of the things you know Phoenix's inexperience could become kind of a factor because you know somebody like Crowder isn't necessarily he's going to be somebody who gets you hyped up and gets you going for this sort of thing, but he's also not necessarily maybe the guy who dials you back. And sometimes you need to be pulled back a little bit. Um, you know, depending on the way the game is going, this is, the, I think, the least of their problems. I don't think I think they'll be fine for Game Four. If they lose Game Four, it won't because of all this stuff that happened in Game Three. Um, but you do wonder where potentially some of the inexperience could show 
uh, with Phoenix, especially given that they're going to have to do a lot of stuff without Chris Paul. Um, now, the Brian, Laker, I'm sorry, go ahead. Say, the inverse of the, uh, I guess, cocky celebrations going on with the Lakers uh, was the role players given an opportunity to take a three-pointer. Um, okay, beyond, yeah, good. You were segging to where I was going. Thank you. Beyond the fact that they weren't going down, you could start seeing that all of the role players, like you know, the guys who are not LeBron, AD, I will throw Dennis Schroeder into this, and I won't include Andre Drummond because that's not what he does. You were starting to see hesitation just spreading yeah, like if, a if virus. If Drummond is standing there open at the three-point line, I do want him to hesitate. Before he <laughs> but takes like, I, 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 tweet, I tweeted out at one point uh, during this game, like the gif of Brad Pitt in seven when he realizes that the head is in the box and he's got his gun pointed at John Doe, but he yep. knows that, he knows that if he shoots John Doe, John Doe completes the sins, and then he wins this whole uh, serial killing puzzle. So he can't get himself to shoot, even though he wants to shoot, and it's a totally clean shot, and he's just anguished over, I want to shoot, but I can't shoot. That was the Lakers' role players with an open three-pointer. So I basically mean, you, what, you're, what you're saying is that Gwyneth Paltrow's head was like in the net. If I'm understanding <laughs> you correctly, uh, it, what's in the box? Just a lot of anguish, man. <laughs> like yeah, it, they, it was. It, you like, could you know, really look, the Lakers. The Lakers shot 30 percent last night from three, which had been the magical number that they had to cross. That's not good. Uh, they were in the 20s in game one, I believe. Um, they shot 25 percent from three point range tonight uh, in game four on um, Thursday, and that is not good. Uh, they, that is their three point shooting through three games in the series has been terrible. Yes, and it if it continues, it's the type of thing that eventually you're going to, sh you're not, you're going to shoot yourself out of a series. Um, this is the one thing that you look at what the Lakers are doing and you say that is not sustainable and I, they're not this bad. But they're not good. <laughs> I was going to say I don't know how much better they actually are. They're not good. I mean, they're, they're no, they're not twenty five percent bad, but they're not good. And again, you know, LeBron, you know, he hit the the three at the beginning of the game. Schroeder hit one. Uh, West came in and hit a couple threes, so that was good to see. Kuzma though was two of eight. He only had he had eight points, two of twelve from the floor. He's been so active. He's a plus fourteen. He's been so active and good defensively. You can kind of look past the fact that he's got ten points in Kuzma's three games. He's actually been really. He's been really. Like he's, he's been has really good in that way. Badly to score. And so you know, it's what. But that you know, that's another place where you look around, going, you yeah, know, the Lakers still have some room for growth. Kyle Kuzma has ten points in three games. Um, but yeah, they they've got to take open shots when they're available. Like it was so bad that Frank Vogel went. And and cracked open the uh, breaking case of emergency Ben McLemore case. Yes, uh, and and dusted that off for four minutes. Yeah, uh, Ben McLemore four minutes uh, took one three, uh, missed it. I I was very uh, impressed, Brian, with Ben McLemore's restraint. And by restraint, I mean nobody passed him the ball at all. Like it, it felt nope. like he it felt like he was put in there to be a decoy, and the other four guys were in on it, but McLemore wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem I, is, like you know, you they you know that they know at this point <laughs> that the minute you pass the ball to Ben McLemore, the possession is over. <laughs> like there's not that's it. So like even if you inbound the ball, you have to be careful inbounding the ball to him because you know you he might be 57 feet away from the other basket. Well, <laughs> just hoist the thing up because that's what he does. It's the Ben McLemore uh, flow chart. Well, you know, but, like when he when he's about to check into the game, Frank Vogel says, like, look, Ben, like wait. We want you to go in there. We want you to take open shots, but we want you to play within the offense. We want you to stay with your guy. Just play really smart. And all he all he hears in his head is Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> That's all he's hearing. It was want, 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 take shots. That's all. Want, 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 take shots. That's the only thing. That is. But like. You know, Wes Matthews, you you noted he hit two threes in the fourth quarter, which which I tweeted out made by Laker standards him like a Voltron version of Clay, Steph, Reggie Miller, Kyle Korver, oh, and all Steve Nash. All of them. He got the game ball. LeBron said after. I'm not joking. LeBron actually said Wes got the game ball. <laughs> <laughs> two three pointers. That's that, that is enough to who, do. Who, if any, okay, who do you think is going to be 
the first Laker role player to finally break out and finally have a game where like he puts down three, three threes in a game, three threes, maybe four threes, but we'll start with three. Like who do you think is going to be just three threes in a game? The choices are KCP. I was going to say, who are they drafting in 2022? (laughs) KCP, Alex Caruso, Wes Matthews, Mark Gasol, um, Ben McLemore, assuming he gets more run, and the other guys have decided he's allowed to shoot. The answer. And Kyle Kuzma. I'm going to say of- I'm going to say Kuz, but I I I I don't think the answer is KCP because I think it's going to be hard to get him to take three three he points by, right now. By the way, KCP it should be noted uh, had a quad contusion quad injury game. that left the game, but he yeah, he, he missed he missed his only two threes uh, on Thursday. And um, I believe is now one for 13 from three point range in the series. I'm just doing the math in my head. Um, that's not good. Slump. He's in a bit of a slump. Um, so I think it's, and he is one of those. LeBron yelled at him in game two shoot the bleeping ball. That's why I'm throwing it to you. Um, and, but it, it could get hard to, for him to take three threes right now. I think it'll be Kuz, but it's got to be someone. In all seriousness, like it needs to be someone needs to provide a little bit of gravity on this team. I don't think it needs to be the same person every night. But again, 25% is unsustainable. But uh, as we kind of wrap up here and get ready for the weekend, the Lakers are up to one. Kyle Kuzma has 10 points. LeBron hasn't had to do a lot of heavy lifting, still hasn't been, I think, really exploded in any game to whatever ability he's, he's capable of. And they're up to one. I mean, it's it, it, they're in a pretty good spot right yeah. now in, in in what will be a tough series. So, um, yeah, I, l- l- the game four is Sunday. We'll try to bring you some stuff on the YouTube channel, Locked On Lakers on YouTube. Really appreciate all the support people have been giving the uh, the very young website, their channel, or whatever the hell it is. Um, we'll try to keep providing as much content as we can there. Again, subscribe to the show. Hit us up at Cam Brothers, Kamenetsky Brothers at gmail.com. If you ever want to send us an email or hit us up with a question that we can answer. Andy, am I forgetting anything? Be there for the locker room chat yes. noon Pacific uh today, uh, as you are yes. hearing this. So be there for us. Uh and if you missed it, go back in time. Yeah, we will take your questions. Um, and if you're not a total jackass, we might let you talk during the thing. Yeah, don't just bone to be one of those guys and we'll let you yeah. do it. And we'll see uh, everybody back on the podcast.